What's going on, everyone? I am Phoenix Wright, his attorney. Welcome to Justice for All. Fair up my turn about the first part of the second trial day. Will Powers has just given his testimony on um, the second meeting with the bellboy. Uh, so it is time to cross examine him. So he says, after they did a one's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. Let's press that. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? <laughs> Excuse me, he's probably making offense to the spying statement, because he, you know, wasn't actually intending to. I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, why did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye in a sort of sneaky spy like. Um... Uh, not helping your case, Powers. I knew he was spying. This doesn't really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly. What did the bellboy do next? That's all that I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. Let's press that. I said. <laughs> God. Uh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what, uh, what happened there? Um, what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. About the person inside, ask about the something, or don't ask anything. Uh, what was the actual statement again? I don't remember. I'm going to not ask anything. I don't think I can find out much more from Mr. Powers. You probably move on to a different topic. So what does the bellboy do after that? So, if I go back, uh, I'm not going to actually not ask anything. So, so, he gave something to the person inside the room. Okay, so that's the statement. Uh, I am going to ask about the something. He gave something to this person. Ah! And what was this something? Ha ha ha! Does he not know? I guess if I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it something, would I? Well, this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime! I guess so. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. This is an incredibly crucial piece of information. Please, try to remember what it was. Um, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk about another point. Namely, what the bellboy did next. Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back and press again in the same state. I'm actually going to speed things up a little bit and ask about the person inside this time. Uh, let's throw things back down. Uh, ask about the person inside. Uh, so who took the something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm! When you're saying you didn't see the person's face, uh, that would be what he's implying. Yeah. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the boy bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is this all, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. What's powers? Please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm, I think it was. No. If you remember, please add to your testimony. I, I, yes, sir. So, you see, if I saw it again, I could say it for sure. But I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Okay, I'm going to take a state here. Do I have anything like that in my evidence? A wooden statue. Could it possibly be the bear? 
or it could be either of the bears in theory. Um, let's see, is it potentially the figure? I'm guessing it's the figurine. Bears are Karita's thing, right? So perhaps the killer, the killer, took the figurine from Karita's room and then gave it to a guard and something, he did something with it which explains the cuts. Um, I mean, it was, I mean, you could think that was wooden from a this. Oh, it, it even says a wooden bear shaped figurine. Okay, so I think this is going to be what we present. It is indeed. Say, dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. What was the point of that ping and pause? Um, where did that picture come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. Uh, what, why are we making this awkward? What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Oh boy. That's right, you have something to say. Please put it out. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. Mr. Powers, we something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, that's bad music. Uh, it probably is. But the thing is, we're supposed to be playing dumb, aren't we? Um, oh hey, that's it! That's the something! Wow, Mr. Rat, you really figured it out! Hmm, <laughs> I recall we found this at Malagard's mansion. At the, the defendant's house! Yeah, this is not looking good for us. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Jenny the Killer assassinated Juan Carita in his room. And then, he threw this William Bear from the scene of the crime. Then, the way we found in Mr. On God's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Man on God is the killer's client. I'm guessing I'm probably going to have to object and try to buy some time. Order! 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 I said order! That's right, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. I'm guessing I'm probably going to have a no wait, it's not what you think sort of moment. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Uh, I forgot that he knew that too. Yeah, but aren't we supposed to be like sharing evidence with each other? You know, we're legally required to? Hmm! I think it's clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. Oh boy, I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. Mm -hmm. There's still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Power's testimony. Person who received the bear. Or the bear itself. I think I'm, I'm going to take a state, obviously, but I'm going to go with the bear itself because of the cuts. Now, it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. Dun, 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 he's going to tap his finger. The bear! Mr. Wright! Mm, this is found in Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night, meaning that he was not even there. So, we're saying there was someone else in the mansion. It wasn't there the previous day. It means that since the murders occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh! I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ongard who took this bear to his mansion. Everyone's going to murmur. Whoa. Why, that's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright! Uh, yeah, there we go. There was no way, time-wise, the defendant to have taken this bear home! Disaster <laughs> uh, Edgeworth is going to object. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ongard's mansion. Uh-oh. What did I mutter myself? We have this area completely surrounded. There was no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. So... 
because uh, my guys were working together, so to speak. Oh boy, so, um, yeah, that makes sense. So, he's going to say that it was the butler, so, but I think the question here is, the killer handed, handed it off to a guard, when did it get handed back off to the killer? And the killer was hiding it on guard mansion, as its butler. Well, what a, a bold move! Hmm. The bear figurine was brought back to our guard mansion by the killer himself. And it looks like he was about to be arrested. Our guard had him do so. Well, he's even got the steel samurai suit on in this picture. I assume because it would be bad had the police found it during the investigation. Yeah, um... I mean, he almost looks like a robot arm there. So, but... Um... I, I guess. Hmm. hmm! Well, Mr. Eight, you've been quiet for a while now. So what I have to wonder here... There's obviously something inside that bear, probably. Was Karita potentially killed specifically for the bear? Um... You know, we need to figure out what's inside this bear, if so... Cause this sounds like it, it's not, may, maybe not just a timing thing, it's maybe he wanted that bear, otherwise why would he, uh, have the killer give it to him? Uh, this is too much. Is there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do plan to- mm, I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. Uh, what? Uh, there's still another one! Uh, there, okay. <laughs> there is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. Why are you trying to <laughs> Well, we're pulling multiple things. Oh, well, uh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Okay. So there's a so there was that point. There's also the person who received the bear and Power's testimony as possible points. Um. So what about the person who received the bear? There was one thing Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. <laughs> that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He, uh, he gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of- Ah, He is screaming, apparently. Uh, question mark? Question mark? Question mark. Dot 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 in question mark. Well, what is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Are you gonna get another testimony now or something? Um, I remembered who took the bear. Uh, really? <laughs> I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm, it was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it! So, I go, you've got to be kidding! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai! Oh, Jesus. So, maybe there's three Nickel Samurais floating around that night. <laughs> we, had, we had Andrews in one, so... Order! Order! It looks like you've dug, dug your own grave! Here again! <laughs> How many times is that today? I've lost count. Right. So the person who took, who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, my own god is the Nickel Samurai. Joy. Thanks for the defense, we made, made that all the clear! I think we've heard enough! We don't know why this bear figure was at the defendant's mansion! As well as who was that received the mail from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Malog God. So he's got he's got to the I see no reason for this trial to continue, but therefore I would now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. So are we going to have some other little objection we can do? Uh you see, Mr. Wright, you cannot win against the truth, could you? I'm not winning against the truth. I'm just trying to, I'm literally just trying to stall here. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. I knew it would turn out this way. After all, when the truth is stated, it is the truth. 
Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? Uh, well, hearing the verdict is going to be a game over, I think. So I'm going to raise an objection. No idea what. I'm, uh, I'm objecting. There's only one way from here to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this wondery trick. What is it? Your Honor. Right now, we have these two reasons to believe my client is a client of the assassin. <laughs> He's a client of multiple people. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was founded on Guy Mansion. Those are some pretty big points. However, it's possible that this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? Are we, don't tell me we're accusing Andrews again. What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. Okay. The real client! Yes. Tsk, tsk! Is this all you have? Ah, uh, dot, dot, dot. No, then, Mr. Wright! Let's hear your theory! Who do you say is the real client of the killer, and therefore, the real murderer? Um. I don't know. I think the only the only possible person is gonna be Adrian Andrews. I suppose in order to prolong the trial, I will do so. Adrian Andrews. I guess that's right. Yeah. So we already know that she tried to frame my guard for the crime by wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ah! Then. And the Nickel Samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. What about Mr. On Guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. So are we saying, you know, so I think our very, very much incorrect theory is that, but prolonging the trial theory is that, um, you know, Framing on guard was part of the killer's work. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period, so... And then she gave the bear back to... The killer, who took it back to on guard mansion. The question is, how did he get in? I don't know. He's an assassin, he probably is able to pick a lock. Um... And so that whole thing was like a setup. Except it's not, but it could, we could try to argue that to buy us some time. That's right! Then... Why this thing at Mr. Ongard's mansion? It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Uh, dot dot dot! Dot dot dot! Dot dot dot! Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? He's going to tap his finger. I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. So the only thing he has going for him is Occam's Razor, oh, that's good, I suppose. Hmm! Murmur, murmur. Let's quit this trial. Come on, anyone can tell on guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on the someone else. You do that all the time. Yeah, believable, it's not something petty, it's murder of all things. It's to save Maya. It's to save Maya. If the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Mia, let's see. Now, this is really distracting, actually. Mia's going to dot dot dot. Okay, thank you, Judge. Order! 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 All disruptive parties all will be forced to leave the courtroom. I can't. Yeah, I screwed that up. Uh, dot dot dot. For the benefit of the defense, I'm ready to play along with his what if game. His what if game, Mr. Edgeworth. So. And so I think, I mean, he knows about Maya, so even though he knows it's wrong, I know it's wrong, he's going to play along for Maya's sake. Thank you. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. The exclamation point. The Mr. Wright, the new must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little William back? Yeah, he's right. Or did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. So in our false theory, is it maybe containing the suicide note or something? Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? 
Absolutely. I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness to clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. Which is... Who would that be? Don't tell me it's a lawyer. It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Again? I see! Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so we have a recess. March 23rd, 11.54 a.m. District Court's Defendant Mommy Number 3. So on guard is here. So, his plan is going according to plan. Say, <laughs> Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage, don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Alright, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Oh, the pearls? Where's Mia? I don't know! Really strong power suddenly called her away! So, probably Maya. Really strong power? Uh, my phone's going off. Say, uh, so, the phone's going off. Oh, it's Nick! Your phone is- Yeah, uh, it's from Gumshoe. Did they find Maya? Are we going to be able to finally end the charade? I doubt it. We still got a whole other half a trial to go. See, it's weeping. How's it going? You can't even hang in there, pal! Uh, yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch on to. So, yeah. Uh, that's good, pal! And what about you? Anything yet? I figured out where the killer in my arm. Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... Oh, jeez. Thanks. What? We don't have any more time. We just had one. Or, even a single clue would, really, would be really helpful. Am I gonna have to present him a clue? I only ever come to start because I kept thinking to myself. Can I keep the crowd going until my eyes were rescued? Have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for naught? A tent, says an unknown voice. Huh? A tent? I can see a six. Don't tell me. Is this. Um. Let me guess. Maya pulled Mia, and then, uh. uh see, Mia got pulled back to Pearls? Uh, uh Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. Oh, don't tell me she's by the big top again. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in the dusty little room right now. But I can see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Okay, Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? Uh, there's only one town. It's a very big circus, so... Yeah, uh, that's the one. Uh, somewhere in a 300 foot radius of the main tent. Uh, uh, what? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About a 300 foot feet radius from the main tent. Hurry! And. And. I can see a mailbox under the window. Uh, don't shoot. There's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay, what else? Uh, what else, man? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. Don't tell me she's like in Acro's room or something. <laughs> it felt like I was in an old office building, maybe the third floor or so. Hey, I heard her! An old office building! Good stuff, pal! Wait, just hang in there! Just a little longer, pal! Where's just luck? Okay, so that means we can do like one testimony and then They'll be able to find her. I guess it really depends on how far um, Circus 10 is. Okay, good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Okay, say, so, Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Oh no, we need to get her a few burgers. Uh, come, Shu, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this, I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Of course, that's assuming the killer isn't ready to just shoot her as soon as the cops show up. Okay. So we're going back to the trial on March 23rd, 12.05 p.m. Let's record courtroom number three. 
Who will help me convene? Hmm. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real criminal. Now then, the prosecution tells the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. So is she going to tell, so say she's probably sick of this shit, isn't she? Apparently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. Hey, dot dot dot. See, however, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Hey, of course I have. Uh, you have seen it before! That's right. It's only natural that the witness has because she was in close with Karina. Miss Andrews, would you please enlighten the court to this man's secrets? Alright. Why? Why does she. Why does she. What? The bear figures were going on in the testimony. We're never going to figure out why does she. What? Um, actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. And so there's a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. That's probably the suicide note, isn't it? Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Oh, it's... So it's... A jewelry box. So it's basically... It's a puzzle lock. Okay. Plus victory! It's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks to me you see me. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes, this is a superb craftsmanship. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Okay. So the bear figuring, let's start pressing things, I suppose. So, actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. Let's press that. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm! Well, it looks like an ordinary figurine! Sure enough. People who don't know, I'm sure they've never guessed that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? Well, if you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. So you can take it apart. And how would one go about doing that? Did she show us? Does she know? Well, you first turn his tail to the right, and then push it in. Oh yeah, so I see! So is he taking it apart right now? So maybe this press will just, you know, allow him to take it apart. Um, and then we can see what's inside it. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh! This is most interesting! Why oh, his new toy? Like he's five all over again. Oh, he's figuring it out as it whips from different sides of the screen. Oh, don't mind me! Go ahead and carry on. Okay, I think he's lost it. Uh, so what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? Does she even know? I said there's a small cavity, so it's enough room to store a small item. Let's pass that. And how do you know about this? I know, because I was the one who bought it. Uh, okay. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Okay. And this is a present from you! That's right. Interesting. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. Does he like puzzles or something? So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Uh, because of its complexity, you don't know the order. You can't open the bear. Let's press that. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Wait, only the two of us. Well, and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are that many people with the same pair in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken. The most of someone wanted to get what was inside. I guess I'm well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same again once it's been broken. So it hasn't been. Okay. But I really can't tell it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Let's press that. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as one never told anyone either, then only the two of us know. Unless he told someone. The two of you, huh? And of course, that means Mr. Agor didn't know, right? Wait, dot, dot, dot. That's good for on guard, I suppose. I think this is about all I'm going to get for now.
figuring was updated in the court record. Okay, so we're moving on to another testimony or something? Well, Mr. Wright, I think you and you have come to realize. Realize what? You didn't really get anything at all by that one way or the other. Question mark? But there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This matter is actually a jewelry box. So it contains, does it actually contain jewelry? Or something a little more personal? Hmm! Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? Yeah, that is indeed the only logical question we come to. What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness. We just moved on to another testimony? Yes. You are the only one who can open this. Please. Do so, I suppose. So there's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. <laughs> Does she not remember? All eyes are on Miss Andrews now. She solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. There's no beeping, no music, no nothing. Hey, there's a click. I've opened it. Okay, so what's inside it? Is this what you wanted? What? What is that? It looks like a, a note. It's a suicide note, isn't it? I figured. I don't think we need to guess. Yeah, but that is. Do we, Mr. Wright? No, we don't. So dot, dot, dot. It's a suicide note. The suicide note? A suicide note left by Juan Carita's former manager, so that's the impacts. Oh, until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Carita himself. So, on guard, probably wanted that note for something. Maybe he suspected it was in it and would figure out the puzzle himself. It seems that the impacts has a very beautiful handwriting. So, are we going to get what was on it read to us? And she just as beautifully signed her own name in this document. That's really morbid because she, you know, wrote it just before she killed herself. This is most definitely a note she left right before she committed suicide. Oh. Uh, Hola! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. So she was searching for this note, but she actually let's see. I discovered his body. I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But let me guess, this means on guard took it. See. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going in Mr. Edgeworth's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? Uh, what is written on the note, indeed? Also, have they found Maya yet? That's right! At least, that's what I would think! And then, I believe it was only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. For the sake of the trial, I suppose. Andrews isn't gonna like it, but... I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much, just to get my hands on it. Unfortunately, she really can't. I was going to burn it, for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, you can please read the contents of this note aloud. Oh well! The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the dead silent courtroom, so are we not going to actually hear what it says? In her notes, let's see impacts left to us a record of all that has happened to her. Without being used and then thrown away by on guard. Oh, that's not gonna help our case. Without being engaged to Korea and then guard's role in destroying that. About how she decided in her despair to end it all. But we're not going to get the actual text of it. And that's all Miss Impacts have to say about that. Insane. <laughs> There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Angard. Then, what? I intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? So, I'm guessing maybe on guard, you know, sort of guessed the contents of it and also wanted, wanted to destroy it. Yes. On the night of the murder, we're almost going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. What would? Uh, God values above all else. He's refreshing like a spring breeze. Image. And this sort of destroys that. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. 
So, I guess he killed, he knew about the note. So, he had uh, Karita killed and then took the note to his mansion so that, I don't know, he could destroy it too, I guess? I don't know, it seems like everyone want, but one wanted it destroyed. Um, at any cost, Celestia's suicide note is added to the court record. It's on guard's fault that woman killed herself. And this time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible, what a selfish person. Yes, there are slime ball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. Oh god. There is no margin for doubt here. This is the killer's client's goal was to obtain the suicide note. But we still haven't established exactly who that was. We know who it was, but the court has some doubt. I'm the only person who needed this note that badly. It's a defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found in the defendant's house. So, yeah. This is where we come to the truth at last. The ones ones were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Please tell me Gumshoe's going to call me. 